Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to build a variety of cake traps. So let's say you spent all day hunting, and you fired all your arrows at cactuses because you thought they were creepers, and you know, you're going blind in Minecraft maybe. So you're wondering, considering whether or not you should eat this rotten flesh, or maybe try to eat your spider eye or something, when you come across this shack in the desert, and you see some cake through the window, which saves you from your starvation. And you go up to read the sign, Welcome to the Hive Mind Cake House, home with a 100% safe, not poisonous or explosive cake. That sounds good to me. So you go inside, and you start gorging yourself on the cake, eating it all, and both cakes when you die. You explode, and everything around you explodes. I will be showing you how to build that trap, and a few very similar traps using cake. So to begin with, I'll show you guys how to build that exact same trap that we just saw in the tutorial. So this is the building before I set up the bomb. So we go back here, knock this wall out, and this is the wall behind the cakes, and see these are the cakes right here. So I grab a comparator, a hopper, repeater, red, we might need a repeater, some redstone, and a torch. You'll see as soon as we place these comparators down, they light up. They're actually measuring the strength of the cake. Uh, you can do that in Minecraft. It It's measuring how much cake is there. So when you take a bite, the signal will get weaker. And that's what you use to take advantage and make a cake trap. So put two lights in front of it like this. And we won't leave these. These are just to uh, to check out if, how the trap's working. And you can put it in subtractor mode. It doesn't matter what mode it's in, actually. I found that out after making this video. And then put two other comparators facing into the side of it. If you're only making one cake trap, then obviously you only need one comparator going into the side. Then next to this, we're going to need to reduce the signal strength that's in those middle hoppers. And you could make a whole line of redstone and put a torch out there, but it's easier to do it like this using a comparator. Uh, so this is survival friendly because you can just use dirt or cobblestone. I'll use both for this video just to prove that it works. And what you need to do is you need to fill this hopper up until it reaches the perfect point where it turns off that torch. Because what this comparator going into the side of the other comparator is doing is it's subtracting signal strength. So you see, well, one second, this is not working right. They're powering each other, so i got to put them on top of some blocks. You see one of these is on and one of them is off. So this one on the left here is getting is subtracting just enough strength to turn it off. You see if we take out that last bit. So it's four stacks of 64 and one stack of 41. That last stack goes up to 42. That's the, the perfect point where it turns the torch up, or turns the light off. So uh, this is like a, it's like having a very unstable signal that's just on the verge of being turned off. So next we'll do the same exact thing on the other side, put four stacks of 64 and one stack of 41, and then we'll have our machine ready that'll be able to tell when somebody takes a bite of the cake. And then we'll attach a trap to that. You can attach any trap you want. Uh, I'll show you how to make a few different traps, but this is the important part of the video right here is this little machine that measures when you've taken a bite of the cake. So remember these lights weren't essential, these were just to visualize how the uh, comparator thing was working. So we're going to take those out and replace those with torches, which we'll actually use in our trap. And then I'm going to dig out this wall back here, and uh, I'll skip forward in the video when I have enough space to start setting up the real uh, the bomb back here. So the next thing we'll do is set it up so when the torches turn on, just like when the lights turned off, it will set this bomb up to explode. So first grab a, your torch, some redstone, some slabs is how I'm going to do it. The way I'll be doing it, because console has a limit on how many TNT can be active at one time, I'll be using TNT minecarts, which for some reason don't have the same limit. So I'll put my two torches like this, and I'll have some redstone running off of them. So you see, because those blocks are powered, the blocks that they're attached to, they're, uh, they're currently off. So as soon as somebody takes a bite of that cake, they're going to turn on. So, uh, actually let's run this a little differently. Uh, so I'm putting the slabs up here, and this is just because slabs don't cut redstone off, so it's just an easy way to get redstone to go straight up without any, any delay like you get from using torches. I don't really know how high we'll need this yet. We'll come back and decide on that later. And while I finish building this, another benefit to using TNT minecarts over regular TNT is they explode instantly and there's no hissing sound to warn the people. 
So next we're going to set up a powered uh, powered rail in a way that will launch the mine carts off when this redstone gets powered. So you see this redstone on the block next to it will activate the rail. And we're going to do the trick with the curved rail up here, because then we're going to drop it down on the powered rail. And if you didn't watch my cannon video, what you do is you just make a curved rail, and then on the very corner of that curved rail, you can place multiple mine carts. This should work for PC, but I'm not 100% sure. There are ways to do this on PC. I'm not. Uh, it might not be the exact same. So when you get enough mine carts, break out those extra ones. Put your powered rail down here. Put another rail so it's facing the direction we want, and we'll break that one too. And then break that, and you see it just lines right up. No issue. And then we'll do that again on the other side. So while I'm building this, uh, I've been thinking I'm going to start doing mini build Mondays. Because I have a lot of ideas for videos that I think people would like, but they're too short to be a regular tutorial. You know, they might be only like 30 seconds or even less than that. Things like uh, archery targets, certain types of lamps, things like that. Just very small builds that maybe just look nice or maybe they're useful, but they don't take a long time to build. So I think I'll start doing those every Monday or every other Monday, something like that. So uh, keep a lookout for those. So now we'll just do the curved rail trick again. Right here on the edge to place some more TNT minecarts. And then we'll be ready to set this up, uh, cover up the top and everything so they can't see the TNT. And then rather than show you guys the same thing you already saw in the demonstration in the beginning of the video, I was thinking I'll do a remote detonation and show you the explosion from different angles in slow motion, you know, like Hollywood explosions. So let's cut to that. So the next thing we'll be building is the poison cake, and we have a room very similar to the one in the, in the tutorial, but this is on my uh, explosives and traps map. So we're going to set up the same mechanism, but we're doing it for only one cake this time. So grab everything we used for the first trap, some type of block, a comparator, hopper, redstone dust, a redstone torch, a repeater, and we'll need some dispensers for this trap. So set up your torch like that so the comparator turns it off, and we'll subtract the strength from it later. And then make it so your torch powers the redstone on top of these blocks. And then next to your torch, we're going to put our repeaters down. So just put a line of repeaters. And we'll break out the wall here so you can see how this lines up. And now we're going to connect our dispensers, which will fire the poison into the room. hard to connect to the side of a repeater. So there we go, those are all ready. Let's seal this back up really quickly. And those will shoot directly into the wall, they won't shoot through the wall, so it'll only affect uh, you know, near the cake. If they take a bite from across the room they might be safe. So next we'll pick our poison. Uh, poison effects don't stack, you can't you know, just flood a room with instant harming and get a guaranteed kill. So this is less lethal than the, the giant bomb we built before. But, you know, it, it doesn't destroy your structure, so it has its advantages. So we'll be using a mixture of Poison 2 and Instant Harming 2. So it may or may not kill them. If they're at completely full health with totally full hunger, then it's not going to kill them. So next we'll make the thing that will subtract the strength, just like we did for the first trap. Put a comparator going to the side of the other comparator. And fill it with four stack. Oh, didn't consider that. I'm going to have to remove that dispenser so doesn't suck the potions out of it. So put four stacks of 64 and one stack of 41. And if you want to, you could actually, after you fill it, you could put the dispenser back up there. I'm not going to because there's no point. It'll be as lethal as it's going to be. So that's all ready. And then let's go down here and test this out. So we go in here, find some totally harmless looking cake, take a bite. And oh god, it was poisoned, and you're dying in this uh, sea lantern wasteland. 
So you try to run to the nearest place and you actually survive. So it seems the instant harming didn't hit us, but the poison did. So that's just an example of this trap. Like I said, it's a little less lethal than the giant bomb. So next we're going to build a lava trap, or an incendiary cake if you prefer. And this is a setup mechanism just like it was in the last video, where it subtracts the signal strength. And the only thing I'm going to do differently here is it's going to pull a piston out that will pull that block out and let lava flow into the room. So this is actually pretty basic stuff. You just basically connect, put a piston down, a sticky piston, like this, facing downward, and then you connect it to that torch. So I'm just going to fast forward through that because it's literally just putting a line of redstone up to it. Actually, we want this piston to always be on, so we'll actually take this torch out. So now I'll fast forward through the rest of this. Doing some slow slab building like we did for the first trap. Wrap this around the other side here. So the next thing we want to do is make it so this room floods with lava when this piston turns off and pulls the block back. And remember, normally if this was a real build, we'd have a, a roof up here like this, a ceiling that they wouldn't see the piston through. So we'll go back here, and you see this is the block that it pulls out, and we'll just make a little bucket sort of shape here just to hold the lava in. It's a U shape there. And that's all. That's all you have to do. And now when that piston pulls back, it'll flood the room with lava. So let's give that a try. So you gotta take a bite of this harmless cake. And then lava starts pouring down very slowly into the room. And you could probably just walk out the door. But maybe if you didn't, then you would die. So maybe this is better suited for nether cake. But it's just an option for another trap, and obviously if the lava does touch you, it's quite lethal. For the last one, we're out here because I may or may not have lost my place when I burn. And you see, when we take a bite of this cake, the wither shows up. And this may be my second favorite after the bomb. So, you know, you take a bite of the cake and you start panicking because the wither showed up. And you were right to panic because he shoots his skull at you. And you try running away through the sea lantern wasteland. And you run, and you try to run as far as you can, but you just don't make it. So this video is getting pretty long here, I'm going to cut it off soon, but to build that wither trap, all you do is set it up like we did for the poison, but only one dispenser, and have the dispenser place a wither skull onto the rest of the wither body. And you can do that on console edition, I assume you can do it on PC too. Uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for new tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday, and soon I might be doing mini build Mondays. So thank you for watching.